Hello. In our third module, I'm going to talk about the differences between letters and memos and to talk about the specific formatting for both documents. Um, first of all, let me talk a little bit about what the difference between a memo and a letter is. Essentially, the big difference is that a memo is generally geared toward an internal audience. So if you're going to send information to a single person in your organization, your boss, or if you're sending uh, information to all of your employees, which may be a larger group of people, it may be every employee of the organization. But again, the memo is directed at an internal um, audience, whereas letters are generally geared toward external audiences. That doesn't mean that you can't get a letter from your organization frequently when human resources decides to um, go with a different health insurance carrier. You will probably get a letter at your home address asking to sign up for the new health insurance. So clearly you can also get a letter from the organization, but more often than not, it would be a memo. Now, memos and letters are both being replaced by email in a lot of cases now. Rarely do we circulate hard copy memos anymore. Uh, generally speaking, whoever is sending this, out, this information out will put it in an email which will reach all the employees. But just in case you ever have to write a memo, I would like to make sure you know how to do that. The other thing I just want to remind you of is that in your future career, depending on what organization you're going to be working with, Keep in mind that every organization has its own preferred correspondence style. So whether it's a report you have to write or any kind of correspondence, just look at samples of other documents other people at the organization have written and follow that formatting. In general, it, it all follows the same principles, but I would always make sure that you, you follow the specific preferences that your organization has. So the first thing I want to talk about is the letter. So the letter at the very top should list your full name, your, if you list your home address, it should be the house number, um, the street name, apartment number if there is one, or if you have a post office box, the PO box number, the city, the state and the, the two letter state abbreviation should be sufficient and the complete five digit zip code. You can, if you want, also include your phone number, whether it's a landline or a cell number, as well as your email. Following that information, you will skip a line and then include the date. The formatting for the date is to spell out the complete month, the day and the four digit year. In business communication, the thing to remember is the date should just be a number. There should not be an ST on first or ND on second. Uh, is, as in this example, it's September 2nd, but there is no ND at the end of the two. So this is how you should write it. Following the date, you're going to skip another line and then write the name and the address of the person that you're sending this letter to. So you have the name of the recipient and his or her title, the name of the organization, unless you're sending it to a private person or someone who is a sole proprietor where you might not necessarily include a company name. Again, the number, the house number, the street name, or again, if the person has the information sent to a PO box, include that, city, state, and the zip code. Then you skip another line. I would recommend including a clear descriptive subject line so that the reader will know immediately what this letter is about. I've known and noticed in recent years when I look at business writing texts that include sample letters that none of these samples include a subject line. You would probably never send an email that doesn't have a subject line because chances are someone either might not read it because it doesn't seem important enough or it may even end up in a spam folder. So I would get into the habit of always including a clear subject line to make it easier 
uh, to route the to, to either inform the, the reader immediately what this is about, or if it's being sent to a general address, it might be easier to to route the letter to the the person or the group of people who are actually responsible for answering your letter. Following the subject, you have the citation. So start that with dear, Ms. Um, in business communication, we generally don't use Mrs. for women. Um, women's marital status is irrelevant in business communication. So the, the, the general convention is Ms., Mr., or it can be a title if it's a someone with a PhD, doctor, and the last name. If you are unsure of the person's gender, there are some names where it's not immediately clear what gender that person is, you will always be safe if you just use a person's first and last name. That will always be correct and you can avoid embarrassment by using the wrong gender for the person. Once you've established that, then you will move on to the actual text of your letter. So you start with the introductory paragraph, the same principles we've discussed in the previous module apply. We need to have a clear topic sentence, we need background information to create context and exigence, and then should end up with a clear purpose statement. The body paragraph, or paragraphs depending on the length of the letter, should contain the specific details that support your purpose, and then you should also have a, a brief concluding paragraph. You will con actually conclude the letter by si saying something like best regards, kind regards. Um, there are multiple possibilities. I would choose the one that best suits your purpose and personality, and then you sign it. The other thing to keep in mind, and this is going to be true of both the letter and the memo, is that both documents are single spaced. So you do not want to double space a letter or a memo. Let me talk about the memo now. The memo, again, is going to people um, or a person within your own organization. The formatting is different in that you are going to list your name and title at the very top. That's the from. To the, can, the recipient can be a single person. Again, it could be sent to your boss, or it can be sent to every single employee in the in the company which would be a group of people the subject header should be again clear and descriptive so everybody knows what this is about and then you include the date there is no salutation so there is no dear mr ms doctor you begin immediately by writing the introductory paragraph so you have the introductory paragraph, the body paragraphs, just as in the letter, and the concluding paragraph. There will be no signature at the end of this, so also no sincerely kind regards. You end the memo with the last sentence of the concluding paragraph. If you should ever have to circulate an actual hard copy memo, and again, as, as I said earlier, um, much of that is being replaced now with email. Instead of signing it at the end, what you would do is initial off next to your name to the right of that so that your initials are showing that, that this information is coming from you in lieu of an actual signature at the very end. Again, when you send out emails, the same basic standards apply. Make sure that you include a descriptive, clear subject line in your email. Again, with spam filters, it's becoming more and more a problem that emails are not reaching our audiences, so always make sure that you do that and that you follow the same kind of structural principles that we have discussed in this module and in the previous one. So please complete the quiz in the on the assignments page regarding this and as always let me know if you have any questions thanks